The Sony a7 IV has been out now to the public for about a month, and it's a very worthy successor to the ever so popular a7 III. I've been using the Sony a7 III since it came out, and I've shot all over the world with it in so many different conditions, shooting stills and video, and I absolutely love that camera. There were a lot of limitations to the a7 III, especially in the video department, but all that has been rectified with the a7 IV. There are tons of videos on YouTube already reviewing the a7 IV and going through menus and really going in depth about the camera. So I'm not gonna be redundant and repeat any of that information, but what I'm gonna cover here uh, are things that I've tried to look for and couldn't find information on specifically on USB streaming. It's a new feature on the a7 IV and a very welcomed one because I did use my a7 III um, for streaming, mostly for Zoom calls and things like that. With the a7 III, I used the Aver Media Pro capture card and connected the camera via HDMI to my computer. With the a7 IV, you could do exactly that, but you don't have to. You can save yourself a capture card and powering that capture card with uh, USB power and just connect one cable from the a7 IV into your computer. It's amazing. However, there are a few caveats uh, with connecting the a7 IV to your computer that no one seems to be talking about. So I'm gonna cover that here. Specifically, uh, three things that I discovered. All right, typically these uh, Sony A7 series are well known for not overheating, but if you're streaming via USB and you have the USB power supply option enabled, after about an hour, five minutes or so, the camera overheats and then it shuts down very soon after. I had this happen to me about three or four times while on a Zoom call that ran over one hour and uh, the camera gave me the overheating warning and then shut down soon after. So it, I typically get about just over an hour, about an hour, five hour, 10 minutes or so, and then the camera goes off. Uh, initially I thought that my battery is being drained, but uh, upon further inspection, I noticed that it was the USB power supply option turned on. So as soon as I turned that option off, it hasn't overheated yet. I've tested this streaming with this camera for over three hours with the USB power supply option turned off and the camera hasn't overheated yet. So that's something to take note of. Turn the USB power supply to your battery off and you should be good to go. Uh, the only, I guess, downside to this is that isn't power going into your battery. So your battery isn't being charged. It's just being consistently drained. Um, but these batteries last for, for a while anyways, and if it does shut off during your Zoom call or a stream, you can just swap the battery. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass if you are streaming, let's say, um, a gameplay or something like that. But I personally don't do that. Uh, I use this camera when I'm, when I'm streaming, I use this camera for Zoom calls mostly. All right, here's the other thing that I discovered. When you are streaming via USB-C and you're streaming at 1080p 60 frames, you are gonna get a 1.5 times crop, uh, an APS-C crop, which is uh, the same crop that you get when you're uh, recording at 4K 60. Uh, this was a little bit of a surprise to me because I didn't expect that. Uh, however, if you have recording turned off while you're streaming, then you get the full frame at 1080p 60 or any, any frame rate. Um, so that's something to keep note of. Uh, you can you can stream at 1080p 30 and have a recording enabled and it'll be good to go. But if you have recording enabled at 60 frames at 1080p, you are gonna get a 1.5 times crop. The third thing that I discovered while streaming is that, um, well, cable matters. Uh, I highly recommend using the USB-C to USB-A cable that came with the A7 IV, but if you choose to use a different cable, just make sure it's a high-speed one. I tried using my USB-C cable to USB-C that came with my Apple iPad, and the streaming resolution capped at 720p. It didn't give me the other options, but if you use a fast cable, uh, it'll give you all the options, including 4K15, if that's what you want to do. All right, here are a couple other minor things. When the camera overheated while charging the battery, I tried removing the battery and powering the camera with just the USB-C power. Uh, that doesn't work, it doesn't even turn the camera on. So you always need a battery in there when you're connected to USB-C for streaming. So keep that in mind. Okay, this one's a little tidbit. Obviously one of the cool things about the a7 IV is the flip out screen, which I'm using right now to look at myself. 
However, when you have the camera facing you and the screen flipped out, all the connections are in front of the screen. So you have cables running through your frame, basically. So what I did to sort of uh, reduce that a little bit is um, to get one of these right angle adapters. These are This is a USB right angle adapter. So that way, the cable isn't running directly across your frame, but it's going downwards instead. So it's just a simple little USB adapter like this. Yeah, it's just a little quality of life hack, you know? Okie dokie, that's really it guys. I just wanted to put this information out there because I haven't seen anyone talk about these things that I've encountered while streaming with the A7 IV. I personally wouldn't call them issues or problems. I think they're just things you gotta be aware of. I mean, we're getting so much in this little package for a very good price and it's one spectacular camera. Um, but obviously, you know, no camera's perfect and there are things you just gotta be aware of and the more you know about your camera, the better you're going to be at using it. All right. Take it easy.